Hello and welcome to Kate's Paper Creations. I am Kate, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Washington State, and I welcome you to my weekly Casing the Catalog video and blog. I sell the products I feature in my videos and I invite you to shop in my online store. If you shop online, your packages get your order gets processed and your packages get sent direct to your door, no having to go out anywhere to pick them up or wait for them. So um, wait in line anywhere. So hopefully you will consider shopping with me. Let's look at today's project. Today I am casing the Four Unto Us stamp set. It is found on page 35 of the 2020 holiday catalog and I am casing this card right here. Now it looks in here that this card has been made a square card. I try to stay with um, card shapes that are mailable and you could probably mail that but I don't I don't like to pay extra postage and all of that so I pretty much stick with a standard card size. So this card is going to be slightly different, but I captured the essence of the, of the project and I think you'll enjoy it very much. So let's get started. I started with a piece of Whisper White Thick cardstock. It is cut four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half to make a top fold A2 greeting card. This fits in a standard envelope. Then I cut a piece of shimmer cardstock and shimmer cardstock is available in the main catalog and it has just a very faint shimmer to it. I cut it the same size as the front full sized front of the card. So it is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I then embossed it with the evergreen forest embossing folder and this is a beautiful embossing folder and um, this is how I store my folders this one's too large for a standard stamp case so I make boxes <laughs> for them so that I can put the title on and put them on my shelf because all of my all of my stamp sets embossing folders and die cuts are all on a bookshelf to my right with the name of the product on the back and I keep a catalog and then I can just, if I have to look up something that I wanna use, I can look it up and go, oh, I wanna use that one and it's all alphabetical on my shelf. So it makes it easy to find. And I can get to it just by simply rolling my chair over there and picking it up. But it's a lovely um, embossing folder. I, I'm hoping you can see it and I'm sure I'll be making some more projects using it. So I ran it through. Now the the new um, cut and emboss machine is available and it comes standard with a cutting plate I mean with the base plate and the cutting plates and a, and a, a spacer sheet and this which is the for embossing folders and this particular embossing folder is a 3d embossing folder and it tells you right on the front what how to make a sandwich for those and so for this particular embossing folder all you need is the base plate the folder with your paper in it and this top plate and then you run it through and when you run it through you always put the um, seam or the folded port part goes in first and then you run it through just so you have a little bit of an idea how that works so that's what I did. I took the shimmer paper and I'm going to turn it over. This is the back side and I'm not sure even the back side isn't beautiful. But anyway, I did that and then I used a sponge and I already did it, but I'm going to show you a little bit anyway. I used a Stampin' Sponge. These come in a circle shape and then almost everybody just cuts them into sections like a pie. So I have a whole box full of these. I actually don't, some people keep them, I have created one for every color and they put a little cardboard handle here so you can hold on to them and not get so inky when you use them. Not a bad idea, I haven't ever done that. Um, what I do is I just have a, a basket with all my clean sponges and a bag for the dirty ones and then when they're all dirty, I throw them in a garment bag into my washing machine and I wash them 
and they may not come out unstained but they come out ink free so I can reuse them over and over again so anyway I used this sponge and I just got a little bit of color on it from um, macaroon and I made sure it wasn't too dark and I very very lightly just brushed it over the trees and was squeezed it down pretty small to get up here into the top sections and stuff and so this is the look that we end up with just a very light shading of mint macaron it's very pretty then the next step was to take gold foil now I'm in the catalog I believe they used the metallic brushed metallic gold but I I bought that but I am out of that I have used it all up so I am using regular shiny gold foil the foil sheets and um, so I took that it is cut two inches wide by five and a half inches long and I um, embossed it as well and if you're you know if it's important to you I, I did it so that I could match up the trees but I don't know that it's important but that's what I did and I'm going to attach it using the stamp and seal plus because this is a foil paper it has a kind of a unique back on it that makes it somewhat difficult to adhere sometimes and because there's embossing on both pieces I wanted some extra adhesive on this piece so that it would stick really well and not fall off when I send it out in the mail so <laughs> I'm going to line that up, which ends up leaving a, maybe about five eighths of an inch on the left hand side of the card, like that. And then I'm going to attach all of this to the front of the card. And again, I'm going to use the stamp and seal plus for this. going to put a couple of pieces kind of across the middle here as well. Again, because it's textured, I want it to have as good a grip as I can get. Okay, make sure I got it, the orientation right. And like I say, I'm covering the entire front of the card. So it's just a matter of lining up the edges and trying to get it straight. <laughs> there we go. I saved it. Yay. Okay, so there's the front that's the front part of the card there then I took another piece of the shimmer cardstock and I wish you could see it because it's just a very subtle shimmer but it is so pretty and um, prepare for noise because I'm going to turn on my heat tool and I'm using Versamark ink and I'm stamping the heart the Herald Angels sing with Versamark before I stamp it I'm going to use this anti-static embossing buddy I do it on my fingers and on the piece because fingers can have oils too. And then I am going to stamp this. And you want to just be sure and stamp straight up and down. Don't move it. It's easily smeared on that shimmer paper if you aren't careful. And then I will bring in my embossing powder. there we go Oops. so then it's got the embossing powder on it put that out of the way and I'm gonna hold on to it with something so I don't burn my little pinkies I've got this little hemostat tool I can and I'm just gonna hold it like that and we are going to heat emboss this I'm holding it up under my light to make sure I got it all melted and it did. So there's that. I don't know if you can hear that background noise that I've got going on. I have my washing machine out in the hallway running and it's one of these newer kind that have this super high speed spin and it sounds like a rocket taking off <laughs> and now it's beeping to tell me it's done. <laughs> anyway, I hope it doesn't distract too much. 
so then I attached this once it was embossed. Oh, and this shape I cut out with stitched shape framelits. And it is the um, second largest circle. And I think it's two and a half inches if you'd measure it. So that's what this circle, where this circle came from. And I'm just going to put on, I think I'll put on four of these. Get this up where you can see. Like that. And I'm just going to have it kind of go half and half onto the foil and onto the card front. Like that. So that is the card on the outside. Then I pulled out the Rooted in Nature stamp set because it has small fir trees in there in the stamp set. And I stamped one little tree on the inside and I stamped off first because I didn't want it dark. I wanted it nice and light. And I just stamped it on the inside of the card like that. And then because I do like to have my envelopes complete the set. I took the other stamp, also in Rooted in Nature, and I am going to just stamp it across and then stamp it again. Like that. And so it gives the envelope a little bit of a finished look to go with the stamp with the card. So there is my casing the catalog. Oh, I almost forgot the gems. Don't forget the gems. We have gilded gems. And they're beautiful gold, slightly raised. And I just put a few of them. Uh, there's two different sizes, or maybe there's three. I think there's three. And I just put some here, like this. We'll put all three sizes on there, like that. And then I put a couple of them Woo, snapping and running away. And then I put a couple of them down here as well. So yeah, just a little bit of more bling to the card. Make it even more sparkly for Christmas. There we go. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you will consider shopping with me online. And you can also visit my blog at katespapercreations.org.